Hey, good morning everybody. John here with FMP Wargamers. And let's make sure the microphone is working this time. Yes, it is. Yay! Uh, this is the FMP Morning Show. Welcome. I'm hoping you guys had a good weekend. I know I did. I went and visited family. Uh, got, a, got away from everything down here. And not that there's anything really wrong down here in Houston. But it was a good uh, chance for me to get away and uh, visit friends and family that I haven't seen in a while. Well, pretty much since the pandemic started. So <clears throat> that is why we didn't have any shows on Wednesday or Friday. Also for Havoc Maker Studio. So uh, I apologize for that. Hopefully you saw the notification on Facebook. But we're back in the saddle and we're ready to go. I'm going to give a little bit of time for people to jump on, uh, but man, I tell you what, we've got a lot and a lot of stuff to cover today, and I'm going to make sure this gets uploaded to YouTube, because I know some of you are only able to watch and or listen to the show on YouTube. I am looking at getting this trans uh, transferred over as straight audio for a podcast in the future, and in regards to the podcast, I'm hoping to be able to get uh, 40k players, especially like the Team Houston, or not Team Houston, the Team F. Let me start by using real words in the correct order. Uh, FM Pro, or Team FM Pro, <laughs> members on um, over the next couple months, um, getting their interpretations of 9th edition, how it's affected them, uh, their play style, their armies, and whatnot. All right, hey, good morning, Grandpa Strange, and... Zeratol 29 that sounds like a medication no offense Zeratol 29 for all of your medicated needs I don't know I'm still trying to wake up <laughs> but I'm hoping I'm saying that right Zer Zeratol 29 uh, so like I said we got a lot of stuff to cover today Zeratol why does that sound familiar maybe it's because I've seen it before here Zeratol. Oh, well. Let's get on with the show. Uh, so, talking about predictions. Um, for the past, I don't know, month and a half, I've been saying that come late August, early September, we're going to see the release of the Lumineth Realm Lords. And last week, we got a little bit more of a confirmation. And this week, part of that... Uh, it, that Prediction has come true. I shouldn't say prediction because it's bait. Eh, I guess it is a prediction because we don't know for sure. But that's combining some of my sources that say it's going to be a split release and that the release is going to become at the end of August and beginning of September. So, yay, those sources or the source now gets an extra blue check mark helping uh, demonstrate the veracity of their claims. I can now rely on them a little bit more, which is really awesome because the more sources I have in the industry, the more accurate I can get my information to you all, which is to me is a lot more important because I get excited just about anything, even if it's not a, really a game I'm too interested in. I'm just excited that's coming out. And a lot of you, though, might be excited about those games. So it's like even better. You know, it's like this chain reaction of excitement. Or maybe it might be something you never heard of. And you're like, ooh, what's that? Okay, so let's get in at least talking about uh, the news for this coming week. And then we'll go into a couple other uh, predictions of the future. All right, so this is one of the predictions that have come true. Lumineth Realm Lords coming in. So, Teclas and uh, I'm just probably going to end up butchering the name. So, I'm ah, what the hell? We'll try it anyways. Um, oh, they don't even give the name. Whoever <laughs> uh, Teclas is, I, begins with the C. Serendal. I'm just going to say Serendal. I'm probably way off. Um, Teclas is now a deity. Okay. Teclas and his brother have ascended to godhood. Now here, this looks like a fairly m massive model, obviously. That base size is probably 120, maybe 150 millimeter, I'm not sure. Teclas is not a normal 
elf size model. He is more along the lines of Oriel or Ariel uh, for the Sylvaneth. So he is probably about two, probably two and a half to three times as big as a regular elf. So this is giving you the idea of the sheer size of this miniature. He is, I, I'm betting this miniature is topping out close to uh, probably 10 to 12 inches tall. That This is a massive, massive model. And that is really awesome because they are getting really knee deep into these large centerpiece models, which is very exciting um, as a hobbyist. And as somebody that's, and also a gamer, I, I like the idea of being able to have this stuff in it. And I know a lot of 40K players are out there is like, well, there goes line of sight. You really don't worry too much about line of sight in Age of Sigmar. It's not as, it's not as significant as it is in Warhammer 40,000. Uh, your magic and close combat are a lot more are a lot more um, significant than your ranged weapons. So just keep that in mind, guys. Gorgeous model. Um, I'm not. I'm still personally. I'm not a fan of Teclas because I've been on the receiving end of Teclas um, in seventh and eighth edition. <clears throat> excuse me of the old world or the old fans uh, Warhammer Fantasy battles, and I just hate him. Because I've been on the receiving end of his shenanigans. Uh, but I can still love... Hey, no, what's going on, Nam? Nothing. We just got into it, man. But I can still love and appreciate the grandeur um, and, and uh, splendor of this model. And, I mean, if somebody was to buy it and they're like, Hey, I need this built and painted for my army. Uh, I will take that as a commission easily. Easily. <clears throat> so I've already looked at that trying to go, okay, well, I can use these different techniques uh, to pull off a lot of these uh, kind of blended effects. And I've already I've already been thinking about it. Um, anyways, so that model's coming. The, uh, Venar the Venari Wardens and Sentinels. I think these are the Wardens, the guys with the bows. And then the Sentinels are the Spears. The Spears are already came in that box set, but now they're finally coming out. I do not know... If these are going to be in one kit or they're going to be in two kits. I have a feeling GW is going to split them into two kits. It is possible. Yeah, they're two kits. I'm just now looking at the models. Yeah, you could tell by the physical bodies. Uh, they're Forget about the weapons, but if you look at the bodies, totally separate. Those are two separate boxes. Okay, cool. Totally cool. Um, and then Light of Ethereon is going to be released. And you know what? I was wrong. We didn't have to wait four to six months. That has been the average for these special character models coming out of box sets. You had to wait four to six months, but they, they uh, bucked the system here and I'm happy because now I can get my hands on the light of Ethereum. No need for this model, but God dang, I'd love what they've done with the model. I didn't care about the paint job. I mean, the paint job is fantastic, but I like the um, disembodied, armor look i think that is really awesome it has made me think about uh that for warhammer 40,000 for a space marine army how i could do that and i if i've got the tools now because i've been <laughs> i've been thinking about it uh so <laughs> we'll get into that later so it's anyways live ethereon very happy a that ethereon has kind of essentially returned the the warden of um oh gosh I can remember, never remember the area that he's a warden of. Anyways, um, he has returned, and I'm happy about that. Um, Sinari Cathalar? Uh, I'm not sure if I got it. Anyways, this wizard is coming. Uh, she was one of the last models that we got previewed. Some people are excited about this because the fabric... Oh, hobbyists are excited about this because of all the fabric involved uh, for painting and... Uh, especially the veil that she's going across her face. It's got a lot of people excited to be able to paint the flesh, but still look like there's a veil flowing off of her. Really exciting model. A lot of flow to it. I mean, with You could tell that they really took uh, into account like the way that the direction of the wind is blowing to show how the different types of material... Uh, the lighter versus heavier and and whatnot will flow with the wind. 
a lot a lot of attention was just thrown in instead of just uh oh, just have the stuff flow to the right no 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 this isn't 1990s or early 2000s miniatures here this is using a they i wouldn't be surprised if they even used if they didn't use a uh, some reference and if i ever get a chance to ask them about that i'm definitely going to uh so moving on let's see what else they got coming out okay so that's it for the miniatures uh the Battle Tome, if you haven't already got it, is coming. We have all the knickknacks, the War Scroll cards. We're, we always expect the War Scroll cards. They're endless spells. We've seen those, so nothing new there. But one new thing are these dice. These six-sided dice. Really, I guess it's more like eight-sided dice because, you know, if you count the, the tops. But these dice are awesome. Just I think they're really awesome, man. I, I love how I love the shape of them. We've been seeing this uh, pop up mainly with RPGs. There, there's a lot of companies now. Well, a few companies. I'll say a few companies that are putting out a lot of high quality dice with different shapes. I mean, there's still your twenty siders, four siders, whatnot, or six siders, but they're messing with the shape, still keeping that statistic right. But they're messing with the shape. And so I this is a product I would consider just buying just because those dice are so awesome. And I would love to see how they roll. Um, I would I would even consider using them for Space Marines just, just because I think they're really cool. Um, and I think then we got our book tie-in for Realm Lords. Yay! And then finally, Horus Heresy people. All right, those of you who have been interested in Horus Heresy, Book 9, Crusade, Road to Thromas has dropped. Um, and you'll finally be able to get your hands on it. Now, this book is likely going to take a little bit longer to reach you than anything else. Uh, since it is a Forge World release. Now, what will be interesting is if your friendly local game store is able to purchase this. I'll find out uh, today... I'll find out today. Yeah, I, actually, it's probably, I probably already got it in the email, but I'm not going to look at it right now. Um, so this book is coming out. Uh, it's probably, since it is the hardback, that faux leather, it's got the metal caps at the end, which it's, um, uh, I think I've got one of those books around here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, these books are really heavy. Uh, they're definitely beefy. They got silver, um, edging there on the ends of the paper these books are absolutely gorgeous i love them um it's probably one of the best things i've ever seen gw do or, or really forge world but i really love these books now that's finally coming and alongside it so you're not just like okay book release to hook we have lionel johnson the primark of the first legion the first night not um Richard Gear first night, but like Lionel Johnson first night, like a cool first night is finally coming. And those go, both of those go on pre-order. Actually, all that stuff goes on pre-order this Saturday. So uh, if you need to reach out to your stores today, probably wait another day or two because they probably won't be getting their ordering information until Tuesday, maybe. And then they'll start making their orders unless they already have it. Um, just try not to overwhelm them. But I would still go, guys, I would still go to your local game store. Please go to your friendly local game store like Atomic Hobby Shop. Uh, that's my go-to store. Uh, I also visit uh, Ed Games and Hobbies and Asgard Games and also Fat Ogre Games and Comics occasionally. But, you know, I, I mean, I, we're, we're very um, fortunate, privileged, if you will. I hate using that word to have like eight or nine stores all through the Houston area. So I would still recommend you go to your local store, even if it's about a 30 minute drive, maybe even 45 minute, go see them. You know, they might even give you like a, a, a slight discount from ordering from them. Just try even a 10% discount. It's better than zero. Um, and if you don't have a store, okay, order from Games Workshop or you know what? Check out those local stores like Atomic Hobby Shop and Ed and Games and Hobbies. They both have online stores and they will ship. So it is to your advantage to support your local stores over the big box stores, so to speak. So yes, I agree, Zer and Zeratol. 
if I'm mispronouncing your name, I apologize once again. It is a cool pose. And what I do like about this model uh, that they're not showing here, <clears throat> there are two other options that you can have on this model. He has a helmet with a winged, um, uh, the winged helmet. And he also has a massive, um, I forget what the name of it, a massive uh, chain sword. It's the same size. He's holding it in the same pose as that, uh, uh, I think it's a Tyronic blade or something similar to that. Same size, same length, everything. Just a massive, massive uh, chain sword and, or like a heavy chain sword. And then, of course, his helmet. So you're getting some extra options out of there. I love it. I'm super excited about it. I love all the dead bodies. Really cool. Um, speaking of, of the Crusade and Road of Thromus, they've been doing over the past couple uh, weeks a little bit of information about the Thromus campaign, how it fits into the overall storyline. Lots of great art. Um, and really, I mean, a lot of the information is just, in a way kind of repeating itself, which isn't necessarily bad. It's just it's a slow new it's a slow week for them this whole time if you have not noticed as i've talked about before uh last week and the week before or actually many weeks before games workshop has been very slow on the news i don't know i don't think it has anything to do with the the pandemic that's going on right now it just looks like they are gearing up for the next wave of warhammer 40,000 which is going to be in october and so right now they're pushing out everything else that they're behind schedule on so they can go they can roll out the red carpet and uh the procession can come walk walking out or walking out on the runway whatever you want to call it and we'll get we'll start off with codex space brains and codex necrons and a massive release for both of them i i don't even know how massive it is yet rumors are saying that there is a box set coming Rumors are saying there is a box set coming where you get uh, two competing sides, but it won't have the um, pre-posed models or uh, pre yeah pre-posed models. It will actually have the multi-part plastic kits in them. That is a rumor, but rumors come true a lot on this channel. <laughs> I try to pay attention to the right rumors and pay attention to the, the credible sources. This one's a little wonky, I will admit, but it's definitely possible. And inside that box, we're going to get tons of new models and two new characters. Will it happen? Hmm, I have no idea. Right now, it's a rumor, so just stick with that. Um, that takes care of 40k it takes care it kind of takes care of 40k kind of takes care of age of sigmar before i come uh before we move on games workshop this is something we when i worked at warhammer or games workshop many many years ago uh we've complained about and talked about over the years that games workshop they about 2012 2013 they kinked or canceled the specialist game line for um, all their stores. So Epic, we knew Epic was going to get killed um, largely. And then, of course, Blood Bowl lost. Um, the, what Little Forge World stuff was carried in the store was yanked out. Blood Bowl, like I said, Necromunda, Inquisitor, if he still had Inquisitor models, all those specialist games were eventually pulled, sent back to the store, or destroyed. And we threw them away. So, <laughs> oh my god, I don't know how much stuff we've destroyed. At any rate, um, it looks like, and I've, I've got this off of Spiky Bits, so full credit to Rob or whoever it was that wrote the article over Spiky Bits. And I, I mentioned it to an individual that runs a Warhammer store outside of Houston. So, Games Workshop, please don't start poking and prodding. This was outside of Houston. You're not going to be able to find out who it is. So, meh. sorry, that was a little childish. At any rate, the Warhammer store said that there are changes to the planogram. And the planogram is essentially, depending on what size your store is, is a, um, it's basically a document that says, this is how your store is going to be set up. 
This is where all space rings go. This is where all Necrons, blah, 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 go. And that's how you set up. And the best way to present everything, I mean, they actually have a team of people that sit there, calculate all this within the nearest inch, or maybe even half inch, so it fits in your store size. And that also links up with the, the side of the house that builds the miniatures or creates the miniatures, creates how the sprues lay out and that works with the people that make the boxes that the sprues go in so they can fit on the shelf there it's like this whole chain just to figure out to maximize shelf space and it sounds ridiculous but it's all about maximizing shelf space that's why the boxes all have relatively similar sizes so anyways long story short they've got some shuffling going around and which links up with what Spiky Bits said concerning specialist games might be coming back, but only to specific stores. So if your store has like, I don't know, 30 players of um, Blood Bowl, for example, or Adeptic, uh, Adeptus Titanicus, or I don't know, uh, the Middle Earth Hobbit game, and normally they don't carry that stuff on the shelves. They don't even have a section for it in the stores. But you have been just cranking out orders after orders after orders. Mail order in store. This is a good reason why you shop in store. Uh, that they're like, oh, hey, look, uh, Todd over here, which, which we don't like Todd. But Todd over here is just killing it with the Middle Earth sales. Maybe we need to... Uh, adjust fire and give him this new experimental plan that incorporates some of the middle or stuff and it doesn't work we just get it shipped back or he just sells it down i mean it, it's a win-win for them so look for that at your local store if you your store has a lot of specialist game players now there's some stores like the warhammer cafe here in the u.s i don't know about uh, the UK or anywhere else has the larger stores like that, but don't expect that um, same treatment there because those stores already carry everything except for mail order only. Let me take a drink. Okay. Non-Games Workshop news. Really cool news. This month, I think it's September 11th. Uh, September 11th. Um, what a day to, what a day to get that product in, huh? Uh, September 11th, we will see the emergence of Ghost Rider, Dr. Strange and Wong. And, oh, there's one other kit that coming out. Oh, goodness gracious. Ah, man, I'm sorry. There's one other kit that's coming out for the, um, Marvel Crisis Protocol. So really cool that that's happening, that we're now finally getting lots and lots of traction on um, on the Marvel Crisis Protocol, which it's really interesting that they've sped up the release of that stuff as much as they have. I think this, this month or on September 11th, we're looking at three separate kits. Sorry, I'm doing a little work offline while I'm talking to you. Um, uh, we got three kits coming in one weekend. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. I don't know what's going on there unless they're, the only thing I can think of is that these first few months that they've been back to shipping out product that because they were back, backed up about a month and a half, like a lot of stores, a lot of companies that they're just for the next few months, they're going, Hey, we're going to toss in over the next uh, let's just say six weeks, we're going to toss our six weeks worth of releases. We're going to toss in one extra model set to um, get us caught up back on schedule, which is good for investors, good for the company, good for us. It's good for everybody. So, yeah, I think that's what's going on there. That's why they're doing that. So that, I'm happy about that because Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange, I don't care too much about Wong, but Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange are the first models I need for the Defenders. So, um, I'm very happy about that because I get my first two characters of my five person team. Hopefully I can run them as a five person team, which will be Dr. Strange, Ghost Rider, uh, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Luke Cage. And even though she's not a member of it, she'll still join that team. 
She-Hulk. That's going to be my five roster. I don't even care how good it is. Um, those are the five I want to be able to rotate into a team. I might have to toss in another member that's like a two-pointer or something like that to fill in the gaps. But that is going to be my team. I don't even care how bad or good it is. So good news there. And so one other bit of news I want to talk about. Um, since I've been tracking the Games Workshop Space Marine action figures and the Necron action figures, especially the new ones from um, Todd McFarlane Games that come out in, I think they're, the pre-order window starts shipping in September. We start receiving them in October. I could be wrong about that. I would have to look at uh, Amazon, my Amazon Prime, but I'm pretty sure October, that's when the Todd McFarlane, the smaller scale version of the action figures come out. Uh, they're already sold out. Uh, I, I, I know I checked over the weekend because I was like, uh, maybe I should buy one, but I'm not going to worry about it. Not, not a big deal. But those are coming uh, sometime in October. So uh, alongside it with that, now I don't think that this is necessarily a action figure, but Green Wolf Studios, which we will go to their page here right now while we're doing that, they've teamed up with Games Workshop, which this is kind of a surprise. I'm not sure what's going on here. Why are you leaving Facebook? I'm not even on Facebook. Um, it's really surprising that they are doing a Cadian Officer 1 6 scale. Um, it'll be just under 12 inches tall. I don't think it's an action figure. I think it's just a, uh, it's like a statue. Uh, let's take a look at Green Wolf Studios, but they are going to be doing the Cadian Officer. Now, does this mean that they're going to be licensed to do more? Uh, I think so. I think so. And if I read the article, if I understood the article correctly, it was a yes. So this is a company that does, um, oh, maybe they are action figure-ish. But they're the, the super expensive action figure guys. I mean, right here for the Galtech Urban Raider. Um, 165 pounds. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's a lot. Um, uh, they won't let me blow that up. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. But these are fully posable, highly articulated, extremely well painted and crafted miniatures. Or figurines. I'm not even sure what to call them. Um, but these are like Barbie doll size. So, uh, um, I'm just going to say action figures. I don't know what else to call them. But they are fully articulated. I mean, and, and they didn't skimp on the fabric or on the materials. So this is what you can expect from them. That's just an example. This is just an example of the, the miniatures that they have. Or... Yeah, I'm just going to keep calling them miniatures because I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> oh, they do call them action figures. Okay, cool. Um, so Green Wolf Studio. Um, man, I mean, they got even they got even cooler stuff. I mean, look at this. This is a, a case for an MP7. I mean, it's not like a full-size MP7, but it's something that you... <laughs> look at this. This is Look at this attention to detail. Oh, there. look at that attention to detail. That is just simply amazing. You can sit there and, and I, I guarantee you, you're able to pull that out and attach that to the um, those action figures. Absolutely bonkers, crazy level of um, realism going on here. I mean, now I'm going to go here and do a little bit of shop and, uh, oh, they do have sci-fi figures. Let's take a look at a sci-fi figure real quick before we move on. Uh, they don't have a lot of sci-fi figures, but let's go ahead and just take one more look. We'll look at the Desert Raider that's sold out. You're looking at about, probably about $200, guys and gals. But, I mean, this is well-crafted. This is not just, hey, let's just throw on some nylon pants. Uh, let's make some cheap Barbie doll. This thing, if you've never seen these type of action figures, um, I guess like original G.I. Joe size, um, then you'll, then you, if you, you just have no idea what I'm talking about then. So reason why I did bring this up is because I wanted to point out that Games Workshop has partnered up with them in regards to, um, putting out a line of miniatures. And it's probably a good idea that they went there. The reason why I say it's a good idea is because companies like that, 
not only and nothing against Bandai or Todd McFarlane games, but our miniature or Todd Mc, or the McFarlane action figures, but companies like Green Wolf Studio they pay a lot of attention, especially to um, the basic guy, the regular guys like you and I. I mean, unless you're like some superhuman uh, killing machine, you know, that's eight foot tall or eight foot tall in your power armor weighing close to like 1200 pounds. Um, unless you're one of those guys, you're like me and we run around in fatigues and our LBVs, maybe a backpack. We got some light body armor that can really, not really going to stop a lot of damage coming through, but, um, those type of action figures where it, you want to invest in the realism and invest in something that's going to maintain its value as long as luxury items are value, which means as, unless there's some event that puts us in a post-apocalyptic future where stuff like that will have no value, just like our, our miniatures and our board games and everything else won't have any value, those things are always going to have value. And they're probably going to match value because it's going to be a limited run first off. And it's going to come from, it's going to be a high quality production second. And third is a collector's item. So these things are always going to maintain or very likely maintain their investment, invested price and increase as time goes on. So keep that in mind when that comes out. If that's something you're interested in, as soon as we see it pop up, I guarantee you I'm going to be all over it. I'm going to be all over it. Now, I do want to bring up one last thing before we close it, or one last thing before I go into the closing um, announcement. Um, tonight on Havoc Maker Studio, let's see if I even got the ad. Uh, you guys know I like to, uh, since I do both shows, I like to uh, advertise both so, shows. So tonight on twitch.tv slash H A V O K M K R underscore studio havoc maker studio. Uh, we are going to be doing a whole bunch of, uh, projects. I have got everything lined up for four different commissions and we're going to be working on four different commissions tonight. Also, I'm gonna have a very special announcement about a community project and how you personally can get involved if you wish. And, uh, the, the different levels of involvement. You guys have heard me talk about it before. Uh, you might have participated in the uh, voting for what the project is going to be. And we're going to make the full announcement on everything tonight, 7.30 p.m. on Havoc Maker Studio. All right, so let's get on to this last bit. You probably have heard, unless you've been out in the desert like, um, what's his name, Jared Leto, and he come back and everything has changed. Uh, you probably have learned that we've uh, ha actually have had a, a few unfortunate <sighs> losses in the entertainment industry. Um, so we're just a, we're going to do a quick. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. I just want to go over both of these unfortunate uh, losses that we have. Um, so let's see here. Oh, there we go. Um, first, let's talk about um, Chadwick Bo Boson, Boswain, Boswin, Boseman. Uh, you guys might know him from Black Panther, or if you watched him, the Jackie Robinson story. I think it was number forty-two. I think that or forty-two. I always forget the name of that movie. Great movie. Unfortunately, um, over the weekend, uh, he passed away um, after a four-year battle with colon cancer. Think about that. Four years he's been fighting this, and during that time he did Black Panther and Avengers Endgame at the very least. I don't know if he did another movie at that time. Possibly that he did the Infinity War at that time too because they were filmed back-to-back. So unfortunately, he lost that battle. Why am I bringing this up? Well, we talk about gaming news, and I mean he's it's loosely related because there's a Black Panther figure that you can play in the Marvel Crisis Protocol game. Um, the other thing I want to bring out is the vast majority of 
FMP Wargamers and Havoc Maker Studios audience is male. The vast majority. And this is particularly important that you guys listen to this. They say about age 45, you should start getting your checkup. He was, Chadwick was 43. Um, so I would say if you're in your thir- late 30s, early 40s, go get checked, guys. I mean, the doctor doesn't want to do it. You don't want to do it, but it's better than better than having to suffer through. Uh, man, I can't even imagine. So go get checked, set up an appointment, go get checked. I'm sure the doctors are getting flooded. So it's not one more person is not going to make a difference. Go get checked, go get checked, go get checked, go get checked. They're going to go in and they're going to be really quick. They're going to be like, boop, nope, you're done. Pants up, get out. (laughs) It's going to be that easy. It's really a fat, I, 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 even though I, I've only been over it for two years. I've been doing it every year since I was, uh, yeah, since I hit 40 and uh, I'm, I'm happy that I get the checkup. It sucks and the doctor hates it, but God dang it, man, I'd rather know than not know. I mean, taking a couple minutes to get your, <laughs> for lack of a better, uh, more articulated, um, uh, term, get your poop shoot checked. You can literally just go, I mean, it, it sucks, guys. It does. But it doesn't hurt, and you'll be better off knowing if you do or you don't. And if you ca- if you do and you catch it early, it's going to be okay. Because there's a lot of easy treatments for it, depending on how far along it is. Also, on that note, go ahead and do some self-checking with your testicles. I know, I know, nobody likes to do it. Women don't like to do it with their with their breasts. Guys, do it. Especially if you're in your 30s and up, get checked. Go see the doctor. Get checked. Go, you don't know what to do or how to feel for it or what to look for or feel for. Google it. Google it. Google it. So check your boys. Have the doctor check your, your poop shoot. And hopefully you don't have anything going on there. It's better to be prepared for this than to have it pop up unexpected. Uh, The other thing, I just saw this pop up uh, this morning. I have not seen anything um, about what's caused his death. It might, it could very well have been of old age and I'm not going to go look right now because the internet is acting a little wonky and I don't want to lose a connection. But Wes Craven, Wes Craven, who has done, well, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, all the Scream series, uh, the People Under the Stairs, the Rainbow and the or the Serpent and the Rainbow, a lot of horror movies. Um, he has unfortunately passed away. I believe it was yesterday, or might have been Saturday as well. So over the weekend, we've lost two greats. Um, one that is uh, that has already been in the industry for a very long time, entertaining us with. Some campy horror movies uh, and content, and some pretty scary stuff, depending on your age and you know your accessibility to horror movies. Um, and the other one, like Chadwick, who has been a rising star in the industry, and that has been oh oh oh, what's going on? No 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 no. It's no. What is going on? There we go. Infinite Void. Um, I just like killed the mood. Go get checked, guys. Ladies, go to get your lady bits checked, please. But guys, men are the most difficult to go get checked. Go get checked. Do not wait. Please, for the love of God, go get checked. Set up an appointment today, not tomorrow. And if you don't want to set up the appointment, ask your wife. Ask your mom, dad, brother, sister. I don't care. Get somebody to make that appointment if you are too afraid to make the appointment. If And get checked, please. All right. So tonight, Havoc Maker Studio uh, on Twitch, we're going to be going over four different painting commissions, which actually those four painting commissions is 
10 different miniatures, but we're not going to be working on all 10 miniatures. We're only going to be working on four miniatures, one for each. And as usual, as one is drying, moving on to the next one, moving on to the next one, moving on to the next one. We're going to get crazy with the, uh, the genres. We're going to be crossing over to one, two, three, oh, four genres, four different <laughs> painting genres or gaming genres we're going to be covering tonight. That's going to be absolutely crazy. I better do some prep work and get the paints ready for that one. That's going to be crazy. Um, and we're going to have a major announcement about the Project Black Shield. That will be uh, the community-driven product that or project that's going to be announced tonight in detail. Uh, you've all voted for it, and I kind of gave it away in there in the name. Uh, but I will see you guys tonight, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you guys shop local. Go to your friendly local game store. Shop there first. And instead of heading to the big box store or Amazon Prime or the the uh, name brand stores like Games Workshop, please, please, please go local first. Support them before you support anybody else. My name is John. This is FMP Wargamers. And I will see you later on tonight on Havoc Maker Studio. Y'all have a wonderful day. It is a great Monday. I'll see you later.